Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to show off a unknown hunting knife which I believe is of German manufacture. So here we have it in a sheath. I'll talk about the sheath in a minute. Now I bought this um, hunting knife at a yard sale and part of a lot. I got some tools, uh, blacksmithing's tools mostly, a couple of blades and a machete um, all for 20 bucks. And the guy really didn't know what he had because the machete blade, which had a, a handle that was falling apart, was a British World War II machete. Um, and this looked like it could have been something interesting because the guard and pommel here are of uh, aluminum, which made me think the Art Deco era, era, so like 20s or 30s, when aluminum was really becoming a material that was being used in a lot of different ways. So um, I took it to a buddy of mine because the handle was was falling off. I think it was there was actually almost nothing left of the handle, so it was in horrible shape. And uh, he is the guy that made my uh, Parang. That's my favorite knife. Uh, that's made out of a Ford truck spring. And the blade was in pretty rough shape, and it needed some work. But the type of steel this is, and the aluminum. Uh, guard and pommel made my friend think that it was German in probably something in the 1930s, maybe the early 30s. So he had to save this essentially. He had to strip it down, re-profile it a bit because it was in rough shape. The person who ever owned it before me did not know how to um, how to keep uh, uh, an edge on something and they had just done horrible things to this. And the overall profile in here was not great. So he made this a true convex, kind of a Moran edge, comes all the way down. There is no secondary bevel on this. Um, had to re-profile the tip because that had been broken off. You still have the grooves here um, that are the original. And you still have the original uh, guard and pommel. And I, I believe this rounding here is partly original and partly my friend's um, improvement up upon it. But there were no markings on this, essentially, that he could read or see or anything. I mean, you can, there's barely perceptible a stamp in there, but it's so old and it was so pitted that he had to basically grind it off before so that he could, he could save it. Otherwise, it was just being eaten by oxidation. Um, he put in these, uh, this new handle, which is our, uh, which is wood, and there are, um, felt spacers in there, um, which are very subtly green. They took in up a, a bit of the stain when he uh, treated the wood. I'm not really sure what the wood is, to be completely honest with you. I don't remember. But he also profiled it so that it fit the uh, the guard and the pommel well. And it has a really nice um, hand feel now. It's very comfortable. Um, I've never really used this for much. It, it was just very cool, and I liked it. And there was no sheath when I got it. So he made me this uh, just very simple dump sheath uh, out of, I think, it was like four-ounce leather. Uh, but he did this all hand-stitched in here. And he, I mean, it's a very adequate job. It fits in here very comfortably. It bottoms out uh, here, and um, the tip is is not in danger of poking through. Though, you know, if you were to fall really hard on it, it might be a problem. Um, and it's an attractive blade, and I really like the way it um, the way it looks and the hand feel it has. And it's a little slice of history. Even if I don't know the exact uh, history there, it's still attractive. It's still interesting. I like the use of aluminum in here. I have a another knife, which I haven't done a review of yet. It's in the basement, I believe, that I need to bring up. Um, and it also has uh, aluminum uh, components. And its handle is actually made out of Lucite, which is also a product that was really becoming big as, you know, ooh, the new material kind of thing um, in that same era. So it may be from that same era. I'm not positive. But overall, um, it's a nice blade, and it's a little slice of, uh, you know, knife history.